I don't know about you, but some of my favorite colors are definitely red, white, and blue. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Creatively Expressive. My name is Amy, and today I'm sharing six 4th of July DIYs with you. I just love how every one of these turned out, and I hope you guys will too. Now let's get into the video. For project number one, I will be using this house cutout sign that I found at Goodwill. The sign has a plastic tile insert and I want to be able to paint it, so I'm going to remove it from the rest of the sign. It is being held on with these MDF strips that are nailed on. So I'm prying those off with a putty knife and then I remove the nails with a pair of pliers. Then I start painting the tile with white chalk paint, but after applying about four coats of paint, I realize that the picture beneath is just going to keep bleeding through my paint. So then I decide to use this plastic tile that I got from the Dollar Tree that is similar to the tile that was originally attached to the sign. So first I need to cut down that tile to fit in the back of the sign, and then I start painting it white. At this point my mind starts going in a different direction than what I had originally planned. So then I paint the tile with this color Blue Bonnet by Apple Barrel. Now, I decided that I wanted the tile to have more support than the original tile did since it's so thin and flimsy. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I found a square sign that I could fit into the back of my sign. This one is just a little bit too large so I'm going to cut it down a bit. And then I rip off that paper picture on the sign and I sand it down. Now I'm going to use this Spouncer sponge brush to dry brush some white chalk paint over the raised areas on the tile. I do this to bring out all those pretty details and it also gives it a more rustic feel. Now I'm going to use a bit of hot glue to attach the tile to that Dollar Tree sign that I cut down and sanded. Now I put that tile in the back of the sign and I use a staple gun to attach it to the back of the sign. Now, if I had a rotary blade for my Silhouette Cameo 4, this next step would have been a lot easier, but I don't. So I just found a flower template online, printed and cut it out on cardstock, and now I'm going to use it to trace onto a piece of felt. First I tried using a white pencil to trace it, but I felt like it was damaging my felt, so then I used this washable fabric marker to trace it. The only problem with the fabric marker is that it's blue and my felt is also blue, which made it difficult to see when attempting to cut out the flower. So then I just go and get a black Crayola marker and trace the flower on with that. Like I said, this would have been easier if I had a rotary blade for my cutting machine, but I am cheap and impatient, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> so now that I can actually see the flower, I cut it out with a pair of scissors, and I also made flowers on red and white felt. Now to assemble the flowers, I am just putting a small dab of hot glue on the bottom edge of the outside end of the flower, and then I start rolling it up. When I get to the fat end of the felt, I stop rolling and I add some hot glue to the bottom of the flower. 
Then I stick the leftover fat piece of felt over top of that hot glue and this flower is complete. Then I repeat those same steps with the blue and white flowers. Now I'm taking a piece of green felt and drawing on some basic leaf shapes and then I cut them out. Then I make a small cut at the bottom center of the leaves and then I put a small dot of hot glue on one side of that cut and then I fold the other side of the cut to go over top of that hot glue. This makes the leaves stand up a bit so that they don't just lie flat on my sign. And now I use a low temperature hot glue gun to attach the flowers and the leaves to my sign. Now I wanted to add one more detail to the sign, so I took this patriotic saying and I cut it out on stencil vinyl. I attached the stencil to the bottom of my sign and I used a spouncer sponge brush to pounce on some white chalk paint. I don't put a lot of paint on my sponge and I am dabbing in a straight up and down motion to prevent causing any bleed through. Then I just keep adding more coats until I'm happy with the coverage. Then when the paint is dry, I peel away the stencil and this project is complete. I like this one because it's patriotic without being super obvious and you could even leave it up all year long if you wanted. Now for project number two, I am using this rectangular sign that I got from Goodwill. First I decide to sand off that wording to make it easier to paint, but then when I start wiping off the dust with a damp cloth, I realize that the picture was a paper cover because what's remaining starts balling up when it gets wet. So now I attempt to pry that sign away from the frame so that I can clean it up better. Most of it came off pretty easily, but a couple areas were being difficult and I ended up damaging the sign. At this point, I am still debating trying to make it work, but then I remember that I have some long skinny signs from Dollar Tree in my stash that I can just cut down to fit into the frame and make my life easier. So I take that messed up sign piece and I trace it onto the Dollar Tree sign and then I cut that Dollar Tree sign down and now I have a nice blank slate to start with. Now I'm taking the color Admiral Blue by Apple Barrel and using it to paint my frame. And I make sure to paint the back side of the frame too. Now I'm going to paint that center sign piece with the color Burnt Umber. Then 
Then once the brown color is dry, I'm going to paint over it with white chalk paint. I cover most of the sign with the white, but I'm leaving just a little bit of that brown peeking through here and there. Now I purchased this word America from the Silhouette Design Store and then I opened it up in my Silhouette Design Studio and added the other wording and elements to it and sized it to fit onto my sign and then I cut it out on stencil vinyl. Then I stick the stencil to my sign and I paint over it first with white paint to seal in the edges of my stencil and prevent any bleed through. Then when the white paint is dry I'm going to paint over the stars and the decorative swooshes with the color red apple. And then I paint over the wording with the color Admiral Blue. Then when the paint is dry, I peel away the stencil. Then I will use a small stiff bristled paintbrush and white chalk paint to dry brush over the wording to make it look a bit more aged. And then I will dry brush some white chalk paint over that frame too. Now I just need to reattach the sign to the frame and I'm going to do that using some Starbond super glue. Then I took the sign outside and I sprayed on some clear matte protecting spray. And you might be able to tell in the final reveal that for some reason the clear spray turned some of that white dry brushing on the frame slightly brown. I've never had that happen to me before so I'm not sure why I did that. Comment below and let me know if this has ever happened to you. But even with that, I just love the way this sign turned out. Let me know what you guys think. Project number three, I'm using two of these hanging signs that I got from Dollar Tree. First I take the ribbons off of the 4th of July sign. And then I set those three small signs aside for now. And then I'm going to dry brush over the three sections of that blank sign. I'm going to dry brush the top section of the sign with red apple, the middle section with white, and the bottom section with admiral blue. And I am making sure to leave some of that original brown on the sign showing through because I want the signs to look distressed and aged.
Now that the paint has dried, I am using Starbond Super Glue to attach each of the Dollar Tree mini signs to the fronts of the painted plaques. I'm going to put the blue sign on top of the red, the brown one on top of the white, and the white one on top of the blue. And then finally, I wanted to cover the hole on that little blue sign, so I made a small finger bow and I'm using hot glue to glue it over the hole. And that's it for this project. What do you guys think? I think this one is so cute. I love it. Now for project number four, I am using this blank sign from Dollar Tree. First, I am going to remove the beads from the hanger on the sign. Then I am going to paint the frame with the color Burnt Umber. I only paint on one coat and it almost looks like it's been stained, which I like. Now I'm using a stiff bristled brush to dry brush some white paint over the frame. Now I'm putting the beads on a bamboo skewer, and I'm using some masking tape between each bead to keep them separated and from moving around to make it easier to paint them. There are 10 beads, and I'm going to paint 4 red, 3 blue, and 3 white. I'm dipping my paintbrush in water when painting because I want the paint to be a little watered down to make the beads appear like they're stained. Now I am so bummed guys, but I can't find the footage of the next steps. But I still wanted to share with you guys, so I'm going to explain what I did. So I purchased this flag image on Silhouette Design Store, and then I opened it up in Silhouette Design Space and removed the three right side stripes because I wanted the image to be long and skinny. Then I added the words, God bless the USA to the right of the flag. Then I sized it to fit on my sign and I cut it out on stencil vinyl. I attached the stencil to my sign and then I painted over it first with Mod Podge and then let that dry and then I painted over the stars with the color Admiral Blue, the stripes with the color Red Apple and the wording with black paint. Then I just peeled away the stencil and reattached the beads to the hanger on my sign and this project is complete. I am so sorry I lost some of the footage but I think you guys can picture in your head what I did after watching the previous projects. What do you guys think of this one?
now for project number five, some of my footage went missing too. But I started with this sign that I got a couple of years ago from Dollar Tree and I removed the frame at the top and sanded off the paper picture. Now I'm taking this 4th of July paper that I got from this booklet of scrapbook papers that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cover the sign with Mod Podge, then I stick the paper to the sign, and then I smooth it down real good to hopefully prevent it from getting any wrinkles. Then I use an X-Acto knife to cut away some of that extra paper. Now I'm taking this heart from the Dollar Tree and I'm using a razor blade to remove that raffia bow. If you do this, be careful not to get your fingers in the way. I was not careful, and when the bow came loose, the blade went right into my finger. So be smarter than me. Keep your finger safe. And now I am so annoyed because I lost more footage. I don't know what's going on, guys. <sighs> but what I did was I painted the heart white, and then I painted the inside of the heart with red apple, leaving a white border around the heart. Now I'm using a pencil to mark off lines around that white border, and then I use the color Admiral Blue to paint every other line. I'm sanding off the extra paper around my sign with a finger sander. I am sanding against the sign in a downward motion and that makes the edge of the paper perfectly flush with the edge of the sign. Now I designed a stencil for the heart in silhouette design space and I cut it out on stencil vinyl. And I attach it to the heart with transfer tape. Then I paint over the stencil first with some more of that red paint to seal in the edges of my stencil and prevent any bleed through. And then when the red is dry, I go over it with a couple coats of white chalk paint. Then I peel away that stencil. Now I'm using Starbond super glue to reattach that top frame and also to attach the heart to the front of the sign. Then I'm going to seal the front of the sign with a coat of matte Mod Podge. And finally, I reattach my hanger to the back of the sign with a staple gun. But I'm not even really sure why I removed it in the first place though. <laughs> but now this project is complete. What do you guys think? 
About halfway through this project, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but when it all came together, I was pleasantly surprised. I think it's fun and super cute. Let me know what you guys think. Now for project number six. I didn't lose any footage. I just started this last year and then I ran out of time. Well, actually, I guess I did lose the footage because I started it last year and I can't find the footage of me sanding it down. But anyways, so I started with four types of these summer signs and I sanded off the pictures. And that's as far as I got last year. So now this year, I'm going to start the project back up by filling the holes on the signs. The way I'm doing this is filling the holes with hot glue and letting it dry. Then when it's dry, I scrape off the excess glue so that it's flush with my sign. Now there are going to be a lot of steps to this project, so I hope you'll stick with me because I think the end result is well worth it. So I am painting the two oval signs with white chalk paint. Then I take the arrow sign and I use a ruler and a pencil to section off the top of the arrow from the rest of the sign. Now I'm painting the bottom area of that arrow with the color red apple. Then I paint the top of the arrow with the color admiral blue. Now I'm using masking tape and painter's tape to mark off diagonal lines in the middle area of the arrow. First I put a piece of painter's tape at a diagonal, and then I use a piece of masking tape as a spacer. Then I put another piece of painter's tape down next to my spacer piece. Then I decided that I wanted the two little tails on the arrow to be a different color, so I block off that area with a piece of tape. Then I continue taping off the diagonal lines until that middle area is covered with tape. Now I'm going to paint over the tape first with that red paint to help with bleed through, and then when the red is dry, I go over it with white chalk paint. and then I peel off my tape. Then I put down another piece of tape to section off the tails, and then I paint the tails Admiral Blue. I decided the Admiral Blue looked too dark for this project, so I tape off the top of the arrow too. But I still painted the tails with the Admiral Blue first because I wanted both ends of the arrow to match. Then when the Admiral Blue is dry, I go back over the blue areas with the color 2 blue. Then I peel away the tape again. Now with this sign, I decided I wasn't feeling the jaggedy edges, so I decided to cut them off. Now I am working on that skinnier oval sign and I am using a pencil to draw a smaller oval so that I can paint on a border. Then I use the color red apple to paint on a red border. Now we're going to the fatter oval sign and I tape off one side.
then I paint over the edge of the tape with white paint, and then when the white paint is dry, I paint over the entire sectioned off area with the color 2 blue. Then I am taking that same 2 blue color and painting the rectangular sign. Now I'm going back to the fat oval sign and moving the tape to protect the blue area from the rest of the sign. Then I tape off stripes on the white area of the sign. Then again, I am going to paint over my tape first with the base color of white. Then while I'm waiting for the white area to dry, I'm going to tape off a border on my rectangular sign. Now what I should have done is paint the sign white first, and then I could have just put my tape right along the edge of the sign and painted the center blue. But I didn't know that I wanted a border until after painting it blue, so I'm going to do things the hard way. <laughs> So what I have to do now is use some small pieces of tape along the edge as spacers and then mark off a smaller rectangle on the inside of those spacer pieces. And now I'm going to paint the border with white, but first I paint over the tape with blue to seal in those edges. And now while that blue dries, I'll paint on my red stripes on that fat oval sign. Then I peel away the tape and it looks like an American flag surfboard. <laughs> that's not what I was going for, but that's what it looks like, so. <laughs> Now I go back to that rectangular sign and I paint on that white border. And now we get to the wording for the signs. I picked a bunch of different fun fonts and I designed stencils for each of the sign in Silhouette Design Studio. The surfboard one is going to say, Party in the USA. And since this one is multiple colors, I'm going to paint on a layer of Mod Podge to seal on the edges of the stencil. And here I'm just showing you all of my cute stencils and what each sign will say. Now that the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to paint over my stencil with black paint and then peel away the stencil. Then I did the same thing with the fireworks sign. A layer of Mod Podge, let it dry, then black paint, then peel away the stencil. Then on these two signs, some of that paint peeled up with the stencil, maybe because of the layer of Mod Podge, I'm not sure. But it was going to drive me crazy if I left it looking like that, so I go in with a fine detail paintbrush and some more black paint and I clean up the messed up areas. Now for the other two signs, since the area with the stencil was over one color, I was able to paint over the stencils with the original base coat to seal in the edges. Then on the rectangular sign, I am going to paint over my stencil with the color Blue Bonnet. Then I wait for it to dry and peel away the stencil. And then for the last sign, I am going to paint over the area that says Food with Black Paint. Then I use little pieces of tape to cover the bun and I'm going to paint the hot dog in the color chestnut. Then for the bun, I'm mixing the colors chestnut, yellow, and orange to get a color that I think resembles the color of a hot dog bun. Then I just carefully paint over the bun area with that color, making sure not to get any of that color on the hot dog. Then I peel up the stencil. Now 
now the hot dog has some mustard in the center that is still white. And we all know mustard is not white. <laughs> so we have to paint it yellow. I saved the piece of my stencil with the hot dog and I'm going to stick that on the sign over the hot dog to make it easier for me to paint the mustard area. Side note, I'm not a mustard fan. So my hot dog would not have mustard. It would have ketchup. But I thought yellow would look cuter. So my question for you guys is, are you a ketchup on your hot dog or a mustard on your hot dog kind of person? Okay, so back to what I was doing here. So now I'm going to add on some star embellishments to each of my signs. I bought this pack of wooden stars on Amazon last year, and it came with five different sizes of these little stars. So first, I'm just trying to figure out what size stars I want for each sign and where I want them to go. And now I'm going to paint them. To make my life easier, I'm going to tape some painter's tape sticky side up to my table and then stick the stars to the tape so that they don't move around and I don't have to try and hold these tiny little things. I'm going to paint the stars that go on the flag surfboard and the firework white, the stars that go on the pool sign red, and the stars that go on the food sign in the colors 2 blue and blue bonnet. And now that they are all painted and have dried, I am going to glue them onto my signs with the Star Bond Super Glue. Now we are almost done guys, all we have to do is hot glue this white and tan jute twine that I got from Dollar Tree to the back of the signs for a hanger. And now I can finally say this project is complete. If you stuck with me to the end, let me know by commenting USA in the comment section. And let me know what you think of this project. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired you. If you did enjoy the DIYs that I've shared with you today, then please help support my channel by subscribing if you haven't already, giving me a thumbs up, commenting, or even sharing this video with anyone that you think might enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!